guys, welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Portsmouth. Now, this is the first episode of this series that you're going to be seeing on the new computer. I hope everything is looking fine, but I genuinely won't know really until I've done a few and I can tweak things and change stuff. It's just, you know, growing pains that always happen with uh, new machines. But I'm hoping that things are still going to look quite good. Now, of course, you'll have already seen uh, yesterday, uh, to, to you that is, uh, what it looks like if you watch my Red Star save, because I did manage to get one out for that. But this is the first one for Pompey. Now... Uh, I had some good feedback with relating to what to do for the 100th episode. A lot of people suggested uh, and went with the idea of doing a live com every game, basically. So that is what I'm going to do. When the 100th episode hits, I hope it will be on uh, a month that actually has a decent amount of games in, like not a transfer window month, because then we won't be able to play any games. Um, but yeah, I will I will do it, basically. Um, a couple of people suggested that I should do the transfer window, uh, but the problem with me doing that is the episode would drag on for so long because I sometimes spend four or five hours doing transfer window episodes and it's a lot of editing as well plus i don't know it, it, i'm not sure if that be that interesting to watch that's the, the other thing about it because there wouldn't be any real matches and i don't know but yeah so i'm going to do uh, a live com every game type of shindig kind of thing basically so let's get into the games of this month. Now, we beat Sheffield United 2-0 in the first game of the season. That was a great win to get us off the board. Then we had Norwich. Remember, Norwich are a great side now. Like, bear in mind, in the summer, they signed Adrian Lawson from Manchester City. This lad, like, only cost him 7 million. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> Manchester City paid £26 million for the guy from Newcastle. And he's still only, like, 22 years old or something. I forget how old he is exactly. 22, yeah. He's an incredible player. 19 finishing, this lad is. He's a complete forward, and he really is a complete forward. Look at his sort of attack, his stats for a... Okay, teamwork's a little bit low, but look at some of these. He's a great player, and Norwich can attract and buy these types of players on this save. They've got some incredible players. John Ruddy's still in goal, interestingly, for him. How old is John Ruddy now? Only 34. Okay, fair enough. Um, Eric Dyer, Ryan Bennett, Mario Justa. Uh, I don't know who that is. Uh, oh, it's a, it's a regen, Spanish regen. Um... Elliot Hewitt, there's quite a few regions in here. Johnny Housen's still there. Ryan Kent is great. And Deli Alley, of course. They've got some decent players at this club. Adama Bar. I wonder if he's related to Demba Bar. Actually, that's a genuine question. Like, I wonder if he is. Oh, wait, no, hang on. No, I don't think he is. Where's that? Oh, Mauritania. No, Demba Bar's not Mauritania, is he? Um, so, it was a nil-nil. There's not really a lot I can show you. I don't know if I can even... No, I can't show you the goals. I can't really show you key highlights from this game. Although Norman Millington did have a goal. Oh, I think he had a goal wrongly. No, that was the next game. Sorry. He had a goal disallowed for offside in this one. And it was correctly disallowed as well. We were ever so slightly better than Norwich in this one. Um, we had one clear-cut chance to then none. Uh, one more half chance and then they had a little bit more possession. It was a pretty bitty game. But we got away without conceding again. So that's two games in the league now in a row we've not conceded in. And... We've got no goals conceded against us at all in the league this year so far. Now, against Swansea today, I'm obviously going to talk about the Wimbledon game in a sec. Um, I really do want to see if we can get a win. Purely because our next games, we've got Manchester City, Liverpool, Chelsea, QPR, Newcastle. That's a really tough run of games. Um, so, yeah. And we've also got Sunderland in there as well now, uh, who we've been drawing against in the Capital One Cup. So that, that, that train could continue going because Sunderland are a championship side now. So you just never know. But in the uh, Capital One Cup, we had a bit of a strange afternoon. I say afternoon, evening. In the sense that we played very well, as you can see, but we couldn't break them down. And it took until... Um, well, took until extra time for us to actually be able to do that and that was disappointing nice we still got twenty-two thousand inside fratton park for this match that is great to see so let's just show you the goals anyway because frankly they were actually some not tasty goals they were just good to see us score them basically you'll notice that in goal for wimbledon paul jones um he is yeah after leaving pompey somewhere along the save he is now in goal for a league two side also um someone was suggesting me a few episodes ago that i should go and get dominic solanke because he's unbelievable yeah he's playing up front for a league two side at the moment eight years into the save so he really isn't that good um maybe on other people's saves he could be but for this save particularly he has not developed very well at all um so yeah, in extra time, basically, we, we did look like the better side for the, the entirety of this game. Basically, They had some good half chances, but we were the better side. And I was just worried that we were going to get knocked out here in a game we played and largely dominated. Uh, but look at this, Yanko just slowly trotting down. And eventually, Lucarelli oh, gets it back to Yanko. And he's just going to... Well, it's just the ball just breaks to Sam Mantum. And he's had a good game. Um, I played a rotated side, so Mantum got a game. And he had, he's probably our best player on the pitch in this game, really trying to prove himself for... A, 
a first team slot. Then just three minutes later, uh, Lucarelli here whips it across the box. It's a bit of a, a melee, but eventually Zabaras is able to bring this down, drops it out wide for Amrani, and our young winger, the Belgian, I think he's Belgian, makes it 2-0 with his first goal for the club. So that was good to see. Um, good to see him get on the score sheet, and he looked pretty damn happy about it, judging by the way he's jumping and celebrating there. Last but not least, we, well, what game could be complete without Sir Norman Millington netting himself a goal? He did need one. Um, you know, we needed a few more goals in us, and that's what we kind of got today. Peralta also played, which was good. Um, some lovely passing from Kieran Griffiths out to Amrani. Eventually, the ball is going to end up on the right-hand side. Um, when we think we've lost it, essentially, Griffiths with a lovely way to pass that Yanko's ball in. Eventually, it's going to get cleared, or so they think. Liddle dwells on the ball for a very long time, but Sam Mantum is alive and alert to everything, as is Norman Millington. When we win this ball back, Mantum is going to pick an absolutely lovely pass. Just Yanko's does well here, but watch this from Mantum. Knows where... Millington is, Millington runs across the defender, and it's 3-0, and it's game over, and that is us through to the next round of the cup. Now, that brings us to today, and we are playing Swansea City. Now, I tried to rest players for that game, but some of them obviously did have to play, and I had to bring on some of the big guns just to make sure that we got the three points, uh, not the three points, got the win. The slight downside to all of that is the fact that um, some of them are knackered, frankly, and I'm worried about the fact that we are going to be without a few of these players for today's game against Swansea. I'm really hoping we can come up with a big win. But, again, really not entirely sure on how that's going to work. But, um, because this has not got that many games in this episode, I did decide that we were going to do a squad report. Before I do that, though, I'm going to just take you through the squad. So, top goal scorer for us at the moment is... How the hell? Oh, of course, he's on loan in uh, Sweden. So, ignore that. Um, can I not... Can I remove loanees? High players on... Not at club. There we go. Yeah. So, Norman Millington, two goals in three games. Actually, very decent. Top assister, uh, well, Millington has one, Musonda, Mantum, Zabaras, Yanko, and Am. No, that's it, yeah, just those five. Um, pass rating, Amrani did well when he came on, he kept the ball really nicely. Shot, no, no, wait, no, yellow cards, just one, we actually only had two yellow cards all season, Zabaras and Yanko with the yellow cards there. Red cards, none, of course. Average rating, Sam Mantum with a nine, but that's because of, of course, only one game. So what we're going to do now is just take you through the, uh, take you through the team and, uh, do a little bit of a squad report. So we're just going to go through everyone and see where they've improved. So Mantum uh, has barely played lately, so you can sort of understand why he won't have moved much. Christian Marshall uh, is not really playing very much for us at all. Uh, Will McGuinness, why are all these players... Steve McLaren, Mahinda... Why? I swear I said squad, and... None of those guys are in the squad. Why is it showing me those? All right, fine. Um... I'm a little bit confused. Is it because Sam Mantum's technically in the under-21s? Right, okay, let's just uh, select Saidi Yanko. He isn't. Right, here we go. Yanko. Um, Gonzalo Larea hasn't really improved, but he's still getting to be quite a decent player. I think he needs to go out on loan. Pedro Miguel Lopez Souza, again, hasn't improved, but it's only really need the start of the season, but you can still have a little look at their stats, but you can see the potential on this lad. That's what you guys, guys kind of wanted to see. Uh, Lucarelli, he's improving massively, and someone did actually point out to me that he's, like, kind of a lot darker in the 3D match engine than he is here, which is interesting. Um, already worth £1.7 million, though, which is nice, and I think he's going to go a long way. I really, really like the guy. He's he's great. Uh, Marcelo, still got plenty of room for him to grow as well. He's still relatively young. I mean, 22, but I think he could still keep going. Worth £5.25 million. Augustin Martinez, he's now basically become our first choice keeper for me because I think he's got, again, more room to grow than Augustin, uh, than Bachman. And we do need to get a young starlight kind of keeper with, like, five-star potential, I'm hoping. That's something to look out for in the next transfer window, really. Uh, McAvoy, have I got... Oh, I've not got it set to show recent attribute changes. <laughs> I'm a nutter. Uh, that sounded really kind of like, um, oh, I'm such a nutter kind of thing. Yeah, no, ignore that. Um, so, yeah, okay. Anticipation has gone up for McAvoy. We'll come back and do the other ones we've missed. Uh, McLaughlin, he never really kind of fulfilled... He, he just didn't really get a chance. He went out alone and just didn't really show much. So he'll probably be leaving the club at the end of his contract, which isn't for quite some time still. So, uh, <laughs> Jesus. Charlie Musonda, up goes his concentration and pace. He's kind of reached his potential ability sort of to the full now, but he can still play well and does very good. He's done some good stuff for us. Ben Osborne. Um, he's kind of reached his potential. I'm looking to maybe move him on because he is complaining constantly now, and I don't think he's good enough. He's behind so many other players in this team. Milton Peralta, with that thing on his face, just glorious player. I'm really happy to have him on board. Uh, £7 million he's already worth. Sir Norman Millington. Uh, potential could just keep on climbing for him. I, I want to see some of his mentors. Maybe his aggression could do with 
jumping up a little bit. I, I just really like the lad a lot. He's a great player. Stathis Zavaras, who has kind of reached his potential. He's 23 now. He'll probably be moving on in the summer as well. Um, not end of contract. I will have to sell him, but we can still get half a million for him, so that'd be decent. Tom Saiku, who just, yeah, <laughs> the less said about him, the better. Charlie Taylor, of course, is out injured, which is why his physicals have declined at the moment. It's quite a serious injury. He will be back within, well, the next couple of weeks, I'd have thought. Uh, Dylan Verstraten, his stats are just climbing like crazy. The young Belgian defender, who we got very, very cheap, if I recall, uh, due to our agreement with uh, OHL, so that was great. Glad to have him on board. Jed Wallace has kind of... Well, he's actually still improving. His technique has gone up, and obviously his mentals are going to continue to climb, you'd think. But he has kind of reached his ability threshold now. He's 27, kind of at the peak of his powers. I think if someone offered us money, we'd probably have to take sort of 13, 14 million if they actually wanted it. But nobody has, surprisingly. The likes of Watmore and Wallace and Griffiths, nobody's bid for them at all, which is really weird. Um, Watmore, of course, only worth 3.8 million. Slightly younger, and again, the potential compared to some of our better players now is starting to fall a little bit. So he's good, but he's probably a sort of lower mid-table Premier League. But I'd say, yeah. Basically, he, he's not going to be world-class ever, uh, but he has got world-class hair, and that is something we can all get on board with. Uh, Asenhus, of course, has had quite a few injuries lately, um, and wow, he's really declining as a result of that. That is disappointing. Um, Ola Aftref obviously has a lot of potential and is still realising that because he's out on loan at the moment. I think he's on loan at um, Jewel Gordon. Yeah, Jewel Gordon, um, IF, out on the Alsvenskan, which is cool. Um, who else? Daniel Bachman, of course, is our goalkeeper. He and Augustin Martinez are roughly the same kind of thing, but he's older, so we do need to get a good goalkeeper, though. Uh, Alex Bass is still at the club, and I have been trying to move him on, um, but it has yet to happen. Ali Burrell still has a long way to go for me, but he's still climbing. Leadership, vision, agility, balance, all going up nicely. Uh, even his crossing, too, which is good if we do end up playing him out in the wide position. He's got great physical stats, and his mentals are actually fairly decent for a 19-year-old. I have to say his aggression and leadership could be a bit higher, but at least his leadership is growing. Liking Burrell, liking your work. Not so much the hair, but your work, yeah. Uh, Borges, £6 million he's worth now, and still has plenty of room to grow, so I'm pretty pleased with it. I think we got him for like £1 million or something, wasn't it? 1.5 million he cost us. What a, what a signing he was. Really pleased about that. Um, still, plenty of time to improve. He's only 19. Joe Dudgeon, of course, is 30 now and will not be staying at the club uh, for much longer if I could get rid of him. David Francois, still very young and has a shitload of potential. Obviously, he's going to be out for a little while um, with that sports hernia, which put him out for two months, which was a pain. Robert Gray is essentially just an older version of him who's stats are really falling he does need to get some first team football and fast which is why i'm kind of i'm trying to phase jack Watmore out slightly and bring in robert gray i'm sorry but it's just going to have to happen eventually you know uh kieran griffiths god god himself uh he's 11.25 million at the moment because obviously that long injury he had that kept him out for four or five months really did take a dent into his uh stats a little bit so he's slowly regaining but again nothing's really gone up just yet but still he's he's a full international for wales <laughs> 11 point million. He's probably one of our best. He's probably our best player, despite maybe not having the best overall like value, so to speak. Um, Dominic Hyam probably isn't going to be at the club much longer. In fact, he'll probably be leaving in the summer on a free. Uh, Ivancic, of course, still only worth 5.5 million, but look at this for potential. I mean, he is something else. And his mental stats are brilliant. For someone that's 18 years old, he has fantastic mental stats too. You really look at this. Like, I know people say that older players have great mental stats, but look. For an 18-year-old, he has phenomenal mentals. And, well, let's just see. Yeah, but Anchorman, 17 heading, 17 tackling. He's not the tallest, but my God, he can tackle. Uh, and he can head the ball when it does come to him. So he's determination, decisions, concentration, composure could do with a bit of a boost. But positioning is great. Work rate, aggression, stamina, everything about him screams, I'm amazing. And even some of his technical abilities are now going up, which is just... I think he could be a um, world-class player, and that's what my scouts are saying about him. Um, you know, the same fairly susceptible injuries, but we've kept him away from that, but they're saying world-class potential, and lovely stuff. I just love it. Um, so let's go. Who else we got? Uh, and we're back to Saeed Yanko. Um, so we'll just check the ones we did before. So actually, Gonzalo Lorez finishing a first touch have gone up, and quite a lot of his physicals have as well. Um, Pedro Souza, and again, relatively similar story right we're going to get into today's game before we drag this on for too long basically i don't want to take up too much time in this episode doing that right so match preview screen we're going to the match preview screen of course 
they're playing the same kind of style as Norwich, so I'm actually going to stick with the system we've been using, which is this one. Um, it worked well against Norwich, it sort of nullified them generally. Uh, we can change it if we need to. We're going to do a quick pick now. Griffiths will play Musonda, Wallace, Burrell, although I'm still thinking... Actually, no, I'm thinking Billington, uh, Burrell will start this one because Millington's still knackered from the cup. Um, Zavaras is playing there. Watmore, Lopez Souza, Yanko, and Ivancic, and of course Martinez in goal. The bench, Kumalo, is actually been put on the bench. Have I got anyone better than that? No, I probably don't, do I? He could do with some game time as well. Another great defender in the making, so to speak. Um, Fluidity is coming along nicely with this tactic. We're almost there, basically. It's because we changed it to standard. Um, it just gives us a bit more. Who needs the squad number? Is it Kamalo? Okay, we will get quite a high one there. 37. Good stuff. Uh, I need to change this off of uh, 2D Classic. There we go. Right, let's get this show on the road. I would like a win. Frankly, they're the favourites, but I, I would really, really like a win here because we've got a tough run of games coming up and I'd like to get some good morale going into them. I know we've done all right against some of those sides. Well, we haven't, have we? At Liverpool, we do all right against, but, you know, you just want to make sure that you've got that confidence going into the games. Only time will tell. John Joe Shelby's still playing for Swansea City. That's cool, considering we're eight years down the line. Is that Willian? I nearly signed him in the summer. I'm st I nearly looked at him when he got released by Chelsea, but... The contract demands. Oh, Willian's already through here, and Martinez makes a good save there. And Swansea got in behind us very, very easily there. That might be something we have to take a little look at in this game, if that sort of play starts to continue, because I can't afford that. Um, we need to be better defensively. Shelby there drops it across. Whoa, and again, it's clear, but Ivancic now should be able to do better than that. But he's got it to Burrell anyway. So opening stages of the game, Swansea have started fairly strongly, getting a lot of the ball, but that's kind of the way they play. And I'm just wondering if maybe... Um, we're struggling to get possession here. It might be wise to drop to our our two defensive midfielders. Attack, don't foul him. Don't foul him! Ah, oh, great. So, penalty to Swansea City. Um, before they take the penalty, because it's not working what we've been doing so far, I'm tempted to switch to uh, this tactic here. Um, that would, unfortunately, mean the end of Peralta's day, but, you know, sometimes you've got to take one for the team. Who do I want? I'm thinking Asenhus, and then we'll swap those two over. How did Infantius get booked already? It's it's an early one for a substitution, but I just think that today Swansea have clearly decided they're actually going to really give us a go, so I need to make these tactical changes to affect that, since they've decided to keep a lot of the ball. Please save the penalty. Do something decent. Ah, oh, Shelby makes it 1-0 to Swansea City. That's depressing. Um, but, what can you do about it? Oh, we are away from home. Shelby with a good penalty. Wow, he is bald as hell in the game. Um, lovely pink boots though, John Joe. Lovely stuff. We need to do something in this game. And if we're not going to get much of the ball, we need to at least be ready to counter-attack. Um, if we do happen to fall a second goal behind, though, we may have to switch fully forward into that sort of attacking style approach. Because we've not been good so far. We've not been good. Um, they're keeping a lot of the ball. And... I think we maybe could close down more. Have we got that on? No, we don't. Right, I think we should close down a little bit more in this game. Just for now. Because we do need to try and get that ball off them. Because <laughs> that's the problem. You know, we can't win the ball from them, and they're just passing it around at their heart's content at the moment. Lopez Souza with it at the back, but that's not really going to lead to much. We're a goal down, so we may have to change things. But if the tactic works, then you never know. Ivancic now. Surely going to go back to Yanko. Whips it across the box. Musonda's got it. Where's the ball? He scored. It is Swansea City 1, Pompey 1, Charlie Musonda with his second of the season. Little bit of a gut punch there for Swansea, considering how decent they've actually been against us. But... It looks like the tactical changes are starting to work. Oh, it might just be luck. I love that Ivancic is clapping there with the ball. That's just showboating, son. Don't show off. I also love how Musonda was able to get the ball through that. It looks a little bit snowy there almost, so it could just be the quality of the pitch. Decent from us so far in the second half. Zabaras, Griffiths, he could slot this inside. Burrell! Oh, good save. Or was it? Did he actually get a touch on that? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he did actually, no. I think the keeper just picked that straight up. I thought we were going to get another chance there. Obviously, we will be seeing Sir Norman later on in this game, and we will be lumping balls up to him just to see what he can do. Zabaras there, back to Martinez. Manchester City through John Stones have fallen it up against Newcastle. Um, I expect we'll see some domination from the top clubs again this year. Only thing we can do is try to keep up with them as best we can. Griffiths now, he can knock this through. He has done Ali Burrell's through on goal. Watch him miss this one. There we go. Uh, I, how do they get those so wrong? It's so frustrating to watch your players do that. Burrell on the edge of the area now to pick it up. Musonda, surely back to the corner taker, back to Wallace. Can he get a good ball in? Whips it in, no. That's go oh, it's Burrell, what a strike. Swansea City 1, Portsmouth 2. Ali Burrell scores his first goal of the season right after missing an absolute sitter. Um, that is better stuff from us. and That would be a decent run. That would put us in second after three games. 
better. Good work here from Musonda, but watch this for, for a run from Ali Burrell. This is going to be a spectacular volley. Just really got hold of that. Um, keepers doing nothing of any use there. Great assist from J uh, Jed Wallace and a great goal from Ali Burrell. Oh, okay, we're going to make another substitution around about 70, I'm thinking. It's great to see us come back against Swansea, really. Um, looks like this was the tactic we should have started with, although it might just be because of the way that Swansea have played. Um, probably best close him down, though, guys, eh? Yeah, we have got you set to do that. Lovely stuff. Uh, Musonda now brings it large, and that's a great ball. Burrell's through here, and hopefully Kieran Griffiths can get on the end of a cross if he's... Please shoot, please shoot, please... please. Sorry, not please shoot. I meant please square that. <laughs> he really should have squared that. Griffiths had an empty net. Like, that would have been a goal had he squared that. I know sometimes you can miss the empty nets, and they do sometimes, but that would have been a goal. Dead cert. Right, next change. Um, as much as Burrell has scored, I don't think he's been that great for us today. Um, so we're going to bring on the big man, Sir Norm for the last 20 minutes here, just to give him a little run out. He's been good as an impact player for us anyway, so I'm thinking maybe switching it to hit early crosses as well, um, because Norm loves a good header, as we've seen in the past. But they've had a lot of shots, but we've had the same number on target and the same number of... No, we've had more clear-cut chances than them, so you can sort of see where this game's been going. They've been shooting from long range. Oh, Wallace with the corner. Go on, 3-0, 3-1. Millington. Millington? He's going to shoot, or he's going to drop it back. Another chance from a corner. Is it the same kind of situation as before? Back post. Lopez Souza, and it's put in the net, I think, by Asenhus. It is Thomas Asenhus, Swansea 1, Pompey 3, amazingly. I'm not really sure where this result's come from, but my goodness, ta this tactic has absolutely obliterated Swansea in the second half. Completely nullified them, and then just completely chopped them to pieces from set pieces. Wallace's ball in. Great header from Lopez Souza, and Asenhus at the far post there to make it 3-1. Now, all we have to do... Now, is survive the last 10 minutes. <laughs> Just do that for me and I will love you forever. Right, we've got to make some changes. Mm. Unfortunately, both players I've got defensively from the bench are both centre-backs. and But Pedro Miguel Lopez Souza is a little bit worse for wear, so we are going to bring him off as our last substitution. Um already set to be quite defensive, but I'm just going to make sure that we don't do anything silly now. We're just going to go defensive. We're going to waste some time. And that should do. I know I did this against Arsenal in the last day of the season, and it went tits up for us, but I'm hoping that can't possibly happen twice in a row. Oh, no way. Ball in. Win your header. There's three of you. There's three of them. There is fucking three of them. I don't care how good at heading the ball you are. You're out jumping three players. Ugh. Great ball in. And... Oh, somebody fucking... If they score another one in this game... Right, okay, it looks like we have gotten away with it. To me, that shouldn't... We should never be conceding goals like that. Uh, advantage there. Just whips that over the top from Millington, who will get to this, and that means time is going to be wasted. Oh, okay, maybe he won't, but it doesn't matter, because that is going to be game over. And we have won away at Swansea by three goals to two. Not quite so great defensively today, but we stuck up well against a good side, and Wallace has got himself a couple of assists to show for it. And all of that is going to leave us in second place, and already six points clear of the relegation zone. Good start to the season. City won 6-0 against Newcastle. Bloody hell. <laughs> that is all I can say to that. Um, our next game, I think, is against City. I dread to think. I really do, guys. Um, so, yeah, we've got City, Liverpool, Sunderland, and then Chelsea will be the next live com game. So, a really tough month. Hopefully, we can get through against... Uh Sunderland in the cup. So guys, if you like what you've seen, please feel free to drop a like on the video, and if you'd like to even on that, please feel free to subscribe to our channel for more Portsmouth and Red Star Belgrade in your inbox every single day at 5.30 and 8 o'clock. And I will see you guys in the next episode for the Chelsea game. God help us. Bye-bye.